We're now going to shift our attention from outdoors to in, and we're joined by Jenny Peterson. Uh, welcome back to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and we're here to celebrate uh, your new book, yes. which is Indoor Plant Decor. And uh, this is really about indoor gardening in a way, isn't it? It is. It's kind of uh, where interior decor meets houseplants. Right. So it's not a Houseplants 101 book. You know, there's a lot of very fine books out there that tell you specifically how to grow plants and, mm -hmm. you know, individual plants. But ours is about how to use plants on the inside of your house in a very stylish way so that it reflects your own um, particular decor in your own your own personal sense of style. Okay, and you use the word our, and I want, we want to give a shout out to your co-author. Yes, my wonderful co-author Kylie Bomley, who lives nowhere around here. She's mm -hmm. up in Northwest Ohio in a little bit more of a rural setting. Mm -hmm. So we had met a few years ago and just became good friends, and, and it was our, our goal from the beginning to do a book together, and this is where we crossed over. Great, So, great. yes. So let's focus on um, this, the indoor gardening concept. What you've done in terms of the book is really to organize kind of thematically different styles, if you will, yes. of, a de of decor, and then matching that with plants and uh, thinking about how you uh, contain the plants and present them. Exactly. It's not just about uh, a, a plant in a pot on a table, although we don't scoff at any kind of a you know household mm -hmm. house plant display that anybody could come up with, but we've come a long way from having a ficus tree in your dorm room and an African violet on your kitchen windowsill. There's a <laughs> lot more options you know, right, today that, right. that just say that are a little bit more stylish, a little bit more creative, mm -hmm. and um, give you a kind of a jumping off point for you know, being very stylish inside. Well, well, and a lot of the imagery in the book is not just stylish, it's artistic and maybe even a little bit of avant-garde in a way. Uh, we were kind of going for that. And some of it might, you know, there might be more of a traditional uh, gardener or a uh, person with a, more of a traditional cl or classic home that could look through some of our, mm -hmm. our book and think, that's a little wackadoo for me. But, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's going to, hopefully we've got something that's going to appeal to everybody in whatever kind of decor you okay. have in your house. Well, you're in Austin, so wackadoo is welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, We're yeah, my, my co-author had to rein me in probably a little bit. I was like, that's not crazy. And she said, yeah, it is for people in Northwest Ohio. <laughs> okay, well, it's a good yin and yang situation. You've brought a, a lot of beautiful things in. Yes. And we want to show those off. And you, we, at first, we have a, a grouping of beautiful plants and really uh, remarkable containers over here. So tell me why you brought this particular group in. Well, you know, there's a, a few different ways that people can start out uh, planning their own interior house, house plant display. One of them is start with the plants themselves. You know, as you can see by virtue of their foliage or flowers, a lot of these plants have a very distinct style, like that alocasia on the corner over there. It's got very, very bold foliage, you know, very right. strong veining in the leaves. So yeah. it, to me, it says tropical or kind of ethnic or mm -hmm. tribal, very masculine. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a dude and want something in your, in your house or apartment that's <laughs> right. not frilly or fussy, that's right. a great plant to start with. Certainly bold. I've always loved the color of the alocasia, and that leaf pattern is almost zebra -esque. I know, it's just Yeah, it almost looks fake to me, you know. Right, and I was, right. I was, I've killed a few of those until I kind of yeah. figured out how to deal with them. Well, when people love decorating with uh, interior Mexican furniture or African exactly. accents, and this perfectly matches that. Exactly. So you, you, that that's exactly what you need to keep in mind if you have a very strong. A theme like that or a decor style going mm -hmm. in your home, you really want to pick a plant mm -hmm. that's got foliage or flowers that's going to complement that right. and not fight it. Well, right in front of that, you have the bird's nest fern, which I think yes. of as a very strong architectural looking plant. Right. Now, you know, I like the bird's nest fern because it can kind of uh, go from, it's kind of a little bit of a chameleon. It can go from one decor style sure. to another. It can be very traditional depending mm -hmm. on the, the pot you put it in. Mm -hmm. It can be very contemporary because it is has that very strong architectural right. form. So yeah. it, that's a cool option for a lot of people. And of course, um, orchids anytime, anywhere, right? Yes, I know. Well, <laughs> orchids and then that little plumosa fern mm -hmm. um, that's closer to you in that tall orange pot. Yeah. It's uh, either one of those could be, you know, a very classic, elegant choice. It could mm -hmm. even be, you know, a bit Asian or Zen exactly. inspired. I've always thought of the uh, plumosa or asparagus fern as being a very Zen plant. It is. You know, you when when you have interiors like that, you want to go with something a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. softer and simple mm -hmm. and 
not quite as bold as that. Well, you can go bold, but not quite as graphic, I would say, as that as that alocasia. And very traditional, the pothos IV. I know. You know, we. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of times that's one of the first plants we all start out with exactly. when we're in our college dorm room. You know, right. you put that up on your entertainment center or on mm -hmm. your headboard and. Um, but you know, it depends on how you use it. You put it in a cute little pot like that, you know, and that immediately to me says kind of fresh and young and, you know, maybe a little quirky. So there's ways to use those old, what I call grandma plants mm -hmm. and put them in a fresh new container so it looks a little bit different and updated. And speaking of which, you've brought yes. a, a classic grandma plant, which I didn't I know, you out. I know, so <laughs> what I love about this is, so what we just <clears> talked <throat> about was um, having a jumping off point with your plant selection. Mm -hmm. Well, you can also do the the opposite, um, have your jumping off point be the your container selection. Right. So you have this very pedestrian but beautiful Diffenbachia. Um, anybody can grow this in, in any household. You know, th there's nothing, you know, exotic about this plant. Right. So, but if you, if you pop it out of the, the planter it's in and put it in that chartreuse and gray tall pot, that square one in the back, it mm -hmm. looks very artsy and contemporary. Right. It has a totally different vibe take it out of that pot and put it into that that more rounded scroll work mm -hmm. red that dark red container instantly classic and a little bit more elegant right if not asian yeah even, yeah, yeah exactly mm -hmm. exactly and then leave it in in that little turquoise pot it, and to me that's a little bit more tropical and you mm -hmm. know earthy because it's more pottery like right and then i've i always like um my household is more eclectic and that's one of the styles in our book as well. So if you have an, eclec an eclectic interior, what's keeping you from putting all of those containers together? Exactly. You just mix them all together and put, you know, very mm -hmm. simple house plants in them. Right, right. And, you know, there's such an explosion in this beautiful glazed pottery now, yeah. too. You can have yeah. any color, any form. Exactly. And printed with beautiful patterns or just plain, you know, it, then they look great together. Exactly. Now, one thing that, that's good to keep in mind when you're... Uh, combining really different pieces of pottery like that is to keep the plants very simple. So you don't want to have your plants and your pottery all working against each other and competing for Good attention. Point. Good point. So that's what I tend to do. Well, you you brought along, uh, I love these uh, I know, presentations. I do too. I'm looking at that hand, it looks like an, <laughs> uh, an old uh, glove model thing or something. I don't know what-, what Prosthetic they got, or- I, I, Who knows? But uh, I love the presentation on these. <laughs> Well, you know what? You don't have to have a traditional container right. to put plants in. You don't need traditional plants with soil. So you've got, you know, your tillandsias here with the beautiful bloom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just there's lots of different ways to display these. You know, here's the, you know, this pottery, well, kind of glazed right. hand. And you just lay that in there mm -hmm. or this, these little, I love it. you know, kind of interesting plant or um, planters here. Mm -hmm. You just pop that, that larger tillandsia in there. Mm hmm and you know what, you don't even need to have, um, like uh, what I was saying, traditional planters. You can use anything in your household right. that you can find old silver pieces, mason jars, right. um, even cool looking buckets with old paint on it. Those can all be repurposed into um, really cool containers for inside. You just have to pay a little attention to the drainage in the bottom. Right. Well, it, it, real briefly, yeah. you brought something that can even hang on the wall. I they, know. These are like pocket gardens. They are. Well, you know, you take that uh, that very strong uh, outdoor gardening trend of mm. the vertical garden. That's right. been a strong trend for several years. Right. You, and when you bring that inside, you can use a very cool product like this from the Woolly Pocket Company. Um, uh, where you attach this to this really cool planter to your wall, mm -hmm. um, plant it, and then um, there's these there's uh, a water reservoir. Uh, they, where yeah, you just let it wick up exactly. Right. Well, so and it's not going to cool hurt the idea. wall. Yeah. Very cool idea. Well, Jenny, again, the book is indoor plant decor. Yes. It's a lot of fun. Beautifully Im imaged Thank and you. photographed. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing Always all this pleasure, with us. Always a pleasure, Tom. Thank you. Okay, great. And coming up next is our friend Daphne. Mm -hmm.